never a break in this league and kind of fun. I, I like I like when people ask me, hey, what do you do in the offseason? I say, what offseason? There is no offseason yeah. <laughs> anymore because we always have something. Yeah, I had somebody ask me the other night, so do you have some time off now until the season starts? I said, no. <laughs> but, I, but but again, but not a complaint because we're not working. I think we both would agree on that, that writing and talking about football and watching football games and going to football practices, none of that is work. I've had real jobs. This isn't a real job. So, uh, and, and I guess, you know, that, that's a nice building excuse for when we screw up because then we can say, hey, it's not a real job. What do you expect from me? But our job for now is to take a closer look at what's going on with the Dallas Cowboys because, uh, look, they're always going to be one of the main teams that we focus on in the NFL, America's team, whether they're good, whether they're bad, whether they're in the middle somewhere. And there's a very high expectation this year, Shereen. Every time I turn around, whether it's Stephen Jones, Jerry Jones, whether it's Ezekiel Elliott, there's a lot of people that believe the Cowboys are, are going to be one of the best teams in the NFL this year. What have you seen so far that would cause you to say – that yes, that's legitimate, or maybe there's reason for concern? Well, I think yes, it's legitimate on paper because just when you start looking at, hey, they're starting 22 from that postseason game or coming back, and then you look at they got Jason Witten back at tight end, and I don't, you know, he's going to play 20, 25 snaps a game, but his leadership in that locker room can't be underestimated. And then you've got Travis Frederick coming back at center, one of the best centers in football, plus the things that they've added to this football team. Robert Quinn is going to add to that pass rush if they get Randy Gregory back from suspension, which they think they will. That pass rush is going to be really, really good. The linebacker position, I think they're probably the less best linebackers in football. The only position you start to question is its safety. Did they do enough at safety to address that position uh, in the offseason? But they may get away with it even if they didn't. This is a really good football team, and I think it's going to come down a lot to coaching, where they, and that's the question mark. How is this offense going to play with Kellen Moore calling the plays? And how is Jason Garrett going to do in the last year of his contract, needing probably to get to the championship game to keep his job? Yeah, you get Kellen Moore, who's not all that far removed from being a player, his first time as an offensive coordinator. As much pressure as Jason Garrett has ever had on him, although he did go into a season without a new contract, finished it out, got to the playoffs, and got his most recent deal. That was back after that loss to the Packers with the Des Cotted game. That was a lame duck game for him, and he stuck around. But I just feel like it's getting closer and closer to uh, the end for Jason Garrett if he can't deliver on this very significant potential the team has and the high expectations that ownership has. And, you know, one of the reasons there's high expectations, they have one of the best running backs in football in Ezekiel Elliott. And what we saw earlier this week, the video from the music festival in Las Vegas where Elliott got in the face of a security guard and moved toward him, and the guy fell over, and then Elliott was cuffed. I know the Cowboys aren't troubled by this because, really, they can't afford to be. But given the suspension from two years ago, I've asked the league what's going on with this. The league hasn't said anything, which means, you know, I have to ask them again and again, and eventually maybe they'll tell me something. But I, I, I would not just assume that this goes away because of the fact that Ezekiel Elliott already has been on the wrong side of the personal conduct policy. Well, I do think it will go away if there's nothing else here. If that's it, I do think it's going to go away. I do think it's also troubling just because of his history. If this was anybody else who never had a suspension, never done anything against the personal conduct policy, we probably wouldn't even be talking about it. We're like, oh, okay, security guard overreacted. This is the end of it. But because it's Ezekiel Elliott who served that six-game suspension two years ago, we are talking about it, and it is an issue. And and until the NFL comes out and says, which they never do, uh, that, that he's okay with this, they're not going to suspend him, we're still going to have that question for a long time about what's going to happen with this. Are they looking into this? But the fact that he has that past suspension is the very reason why it's a big deal, because the way the personal conduct policy is written, if you're a repeat offender, you are more likely to face significant discipline. Remember the letter he got in 2017, any further incidents could result yeah. in banishment from the league. And when you look at the terms, the specific bullet points, the prohibited conduct under the personal conduct policy, the first one, 
actual or threatened physical violence. And it's all in the eye of the beholder. What, what was he doing? What was the interaction with the security guard? There was intimidation. Was that threatened physical violence? The guy backed off and fell down. And you could even look at that. There's a little chicken wing action from Ezekiel Elliott as the guy falls down that maybe you could say he was helped down. But ultimately, it's something the league office decides. And we saw how they have exercised discretion in the past against Ezekiel Elliott. And I think a lot of us believe they were too aggressive, that they, they, they didn't give him fair procedures to try to prove that he was innocent or at least not as guilty as they believed. And uh, I, I just think because of that history, we, we need to watch this. Um, it, it could result in another eruption from Mount Jerry if they would try to do anything to Ezekiel Elliott. And we thought we were past that ugliness between Jerry Jones and Roger Goodell. But until the NFL says whatever they're going to do, if anything, with this, we just have to wait and watch and see because of that history. That's the key. And you're right. Anybody else, we don't care. Because of Ezekiel Elliott's history, we have to pay attention to it. Not to make too much light of this, but was it a block or a charge? Rex Chapman would uh, would call that probably a, a <laughs> probably a block, probably a block. Although I don't, uh, yeah, we, we it, 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 my favorite Twitter account. If you don't know what we're talking about, check out at Rex Chapman on Twitter.com. All right, um, Dak Prescott doesn't have his new contract, and you know we assume he's going to get one at some point. Are the fans in Dallas as sold on Dak Prescott as the 10 years, 15 years starting quarterback as the organization seems to be? Oh, my gosh. It, it's really been a funny offseason and, and funny on Twitter to see the fans. And there, it, it's, it reminds me so much of Tony Romo because there is no gray area. It's black and white. It's He's great. It's he's terrible. Why would you give him a new contract? Let him play out and leave or absolutely he's worth 30 million dollars a year. And and uh, I, if it wasn't for Roma, I never would have seen anything like it. But a lot of them, the Romo lovers seem to hate Dak Prescott. And maybe it's because they feel like he put they that Prescott pushed Romo out the door. And in a way, I guess he did because it still would be Romo's job otherwise. Uh, but but I've it, it's just it's so crazy to me that that there's these two sides that are just so opposite and no gray area there with Dak Prescott they either love him or hate him here and and uh, they're gonna love him a lot more if he can deliver on a Super Bowl uh, and that's what got people to love Roger Staubach and Troy Aikman and why they don't love uh, Danny White and and perhaps Tony Romo as much as they should yeah, and I, I saw something from Dak Prescott in the postseason that gave me a lot of faith that he's ready to take that step. I mean, the guy's only played a few years in the NFL, and he kind of got thrust into things quickly. He was great his first year, second year, so-so. Last year, though, in the in the game against the Seahawks, I mean, hey, it's Russell Wilson and the Seahawks, and Dak Prescott engineered a victory on behalf of the Cowboys. And then in the game against the Rams, when the running game wasn't there like it usually is, I thought Dak Prescott played really well. And if you can get Prescott to a point where he can deliver without Ezekiel Elliott getting 150 yards from scrimmage, that's the kind of quarterback you need. You know, most franchise quarterbacks don't need to have an Ezekiel Elliott gaining five yards a carry and ultimately busting a long run and breaking the back of the defense. Most great quarterbacks do it without that help. And I think we may be seeing Prescott move in the direction where maybe he can do it without having that battering ram of Ezekiel Elliott. And if they ever get to that point, uh, th then it is time to start clearing a spot for another Super Bowl trophy. Yeah, no question about it. And Amari Cooper made a big difference for him last year. You just look at the yards per attempt, and they went up significantly when Amari Cooper joined the team against Tennessee and in those last nine games that he played with the Cowboys. And I just think Amari Cooper made Dak Prescott a better quarterback last season. And I do think we saw some signs of that in the postseason. And I do think he's going to be a better quarterback this season with Amari Cooper in the offseason, with Amari Cooper all season, uh, I think it makes him a better quarterback. And, and Amari, frankly, has played better than Dez played with Dak Prescott. Dez had that one great year with Tony Roma, but I'm saying the 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 Dak the Dez Bryant that that Dak played with, Amari is better than that guy. And there's enough promise on that team that. Jason Witten was lured out of retirement, retired from broadcasting to unretire in football. And uh, what, what can he really add to this team, though? I mean, what does he have left in the tank? And if he's only going to be doing limited snaps, I mean, is it more leadership? Is it kind of like quasi-coach? What do we really expect him to contribute to a team that, that 
seemed to be okay without him last year. I think he nailed it. It's a quasi coach. They're paying for that leadership in the locker room. I think it's the same thing they're doing on defense with Sean Lee. And they made this big deal about how he's going to be the starter at strong side linebacker. Come on now. They don't start three linebackers in most games. <laughs> Damian Wilson did start nine games last season, but I think we're going to see Sean Lee start about half the game. So he's a starter in name only. I think Jason Witten's a starter in name only. They're paying leadership for those guys on offense and defense to show these young guys how it's done this is a young people don't realize how young this football team is this is a really really young football team that is built to win over the long haul the Cowboys have done a great job of drafting guys and they did a great job of getting Amari Cooper in here uh, during the season last season young football team that's built to win for a long time and these two guys are going to be paid for their leadership abilities more than what they do on the field and if they win the division this year, one of the teams the Cowboys will have to overcome in the NFC East, Washington. What has Washington done this offseason to try to inject themselves into the discussion in the division, in the conference, and maybe get back to an NFC championship game for the first time since 1991? Examination of the Washington offseason right after this on PFT Live. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.